Hey guys, Acert here, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create an ammo and reloading system like the one you see here. I'll only be covering the code directly related to ammo and reloading, so if you want a more in-depth tutorial on ranged projectiles, check out this video. The link's in the description. I go over everything in depth. This video is sponsored by Node Essentials, the biggest knowledge base for Godot nodes, but more on that later. Building out a system like this is easy, right? When you shoot, you subtract ammo from the clip. When you reload, you subtract ammo from the reserves and add it back to the clip. But there are a good amount of edge cases that may catch you off guard. For example, what happens when you try to reload, but there's no ammo in the reserves? Or what about shooting when there's no ammo in the clip? Or my favorite, what happens when you try to reload and there's some ammo in the reserves, but not enough to fully refill the clip? Let me show you how I implemented this demo so that all of these edge cases and more were taken care of. I'm in the player script where this entire ammo and reloading system is made. So really quick, let's go over the variables. Max ammo is the max size of the clip. The clip being kind of like a container that holds the ammo that you can shoot before you need the reload. Current ammo is the amount of ammo in the clip. Reserve ammo is the amount of ammo you have that's not in the clip. This is the ammo that's uh, that the clip pulls from when it reloads. The reload time is how long it takes to reload. And finally, the fire rate is, uh, well, how fast you shoot. And it's represented in time between shots. All right, let's start with taking a look at the physics process. This is where we are listening to the player's input. First, we set the, we're setting the player's rotation. Uh, and this is just by putting look at the global mouse position um, just right here. So be, because this code is in the player, we can just do that and it will constantly look at the mouse position because phys physics process is constantly being called. Um, all right, after that, we need to check if we are currently reloading. If we are cur currently reloading, so if it's not stopped, um, which means if it's running, if we're currently reloading, just return. Don't run any of this code. We don't want to sense any clicks. If we're, if we're reloading, just wait for the reload to finish. If we aren't currently reloading, uh, we will sense the clicks. Uh, let's do left clicking first, which is shooting. If we are currently holding down left click and we have ammo and we have ammo in the clip, shoot, call the shoot function. If we are holding down left click and we do not have ammo in the clip, reload. Um, and this is our first edge case. What happens if we shoot, if we, if we press the shoot button while we have no ammo? Um, I've decided that I want it to automatically reload because I can't think of a situation where you wouldn't want that. Um, it, it's as if we're pressing the reload button. Speaking of which, what if we do press the reload button? Uh, so else if, if we're not pressing left click, if we do press right, right click and we are missing ammo and the current ammo is less than the max ammo, call reload. Uh, another edge case, what if we try to reload with full ammo? Well, nothing should happen. And we make sure of that here. And why are we doing this in the physics process? Since there's a function called input that gets called whenever you do an input, wouldn't it be better there? No, not for this demo, because I wanted you to be able to hold the shoot button down and the input function is only called once when you hold the button down. Um, but in the physics process, I can constantly check if it's pressed and if it is pressed, shoot. We're now calling the shoot function, but what do we actually do inside of it? Here's our shoot function. Um, we're doing a bunch of things. The first thing is managing our fire rate. So remember the fire rate is the time between shots and naturally we're going to manage time with a timer. We have our shoot timer here. And so basically the idea is we shoot, the timer goes off. While the timer's running, we can't shoot. And then when it finishes, we can shoot again. So the shorter the amount of time is, the faster we shoot. And then the longer the amount of time is, the slower we shoot. Uh, so right here, if the timer's not stopped, if the timer's running, return. Just don't shoot. Don't do any of this. If the timer is running, continue running the code, of, uh, right? Continue running the shoot code. 
Now, when do we trigger the shoot timer? When do we start the timer? Right here, all the way at the end. Once we finish all, like, all the stuff we need to do for shooting, start the shoot timer. Now, why am I inputting uh, into the timer 0.25 minus the fire rate? That is kind of confusing. Well, the reason is because I wanted it to be the higher the fire rate, like the larger the number, the, the quicker you fire. So the smaller the, the timer. Um, so 0.25 is actually the max fire rate I have here. Obviously it can be whatever you want. And then subtracting the actual fire rate gets, uh, gets me that relationship. So we have, let's say we've broken through the code. We're allowed to shoot. What do we actually do? First, we subtract one from the current ammo. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. Uh, next, we spawn in the actual bullet. So we instance the bullet. We set its position. We set its direction. And then we add it to the scene. Next, we update the ammo display. So in the demo, um, the ammo display is just a grid container full of, of texture wrecks. Um, and those textures being like the actual bullet. Uh, we could just have a number here, but I wanted to make it look nice. So um, to update this in the shoot function, all we do is free one of, of the children, which remember is just a bunch of texture wrecks. If we go into remote, we can actually see this. So um, we're in the player and then canvas layer, ammo display. All these texture wrecks are the little um, ammo displays. And then as we shoot, they get deleted. We reload, they get added back. And finally, we start the shoot timer, which I already talked about. So that was shooting. Now let's take a look at reloading. We have two reload functions. Uh, one is called reload and the other is called refill ammo. You can think of the reload one as attempt reload. And then refill ammo is the one that actually, you know, refills the ammo. So in the reload function, um, well, first let's just really quickly review when we're calling it. We're calling it when we right click and we are missing ammo. And then we're also calling it when we left click and we have no ammo. All right. So reload is called. Um, first we check if we have any ammo at all in the reserves. If we don't, just don't do anything. Just stop. That's one of our edge cases, right? If we try to reload when we have no ammo, um, do nothing. If we do have ammo, we continue. Um, we start the reload timer. Now the reload timer is what keeps track of our reload. If we, if we're reloading, the timer is going. And then also remember, um, right here, if there, if the timer is not going, or not not going. So if the timer is going, uh, we return. So we don't do any of this. It kind of locks us out. Um, all right, so back to reload. We, so this is, again, we, we start the reload timer. Um, and then everything else is just displaying the, the reload progress. Remember um, down here. So if I reload this, this little progress bar, um, we show it because normally it's invisible. And then we animate it with a tween. We create a tween. We set the value um, of the progress bar to zero. And then we um, tween the progress bars value property from zero to one over a duration of reload time. And that is it for the reload function. Now you should be wondering, where does the refill ammo function get called? I don't see it get called anywhere. That's because it's being called from a signal. Um, we, in, in ready, we're connecting our reload timers timeout signal to our refill ammo function. So, so um, when the reload timer finishes, this our refill ammo function will be called. We also call it in ready, uh, just so at, we have ammo when we start, right? All right, so the timer finishes, refill ammo is called, what happens? There are two cases that we need to take care of. First, and the most common, is there is enough reserve ammo to fully refill the clip. The other situation is the opposite, right? There's not enough reserve ammo to fully refill the clip. So what does that actually look like? Well, first, uh, we need to calculate our ammo missing, which is just the max ammo minus the current ammo. Um, 
And now we're checking for that first case. If the reserve ammo is greater than or equal to the ammo missing, if we have enough ammo to refill the clip fully, first we set the reserve ammo equal to what? Reserve ammo minus ammo missing. So let's say ammo missing was two. It's just like our reserve ammo minus two. And then current ammo, just set that equal to the max ammo because we already know we're fully refilling the clip. And that looks something like this. Uh, we have 30 in the reserves, 10 in the clip. And when we shoot all of our bullets and we reload, we put 10 back into the clip and then subtract 10 from 30, which is 20. And what about the other case? What if there's not enough reserve ammo to fully refill the clip? Well, first, we, we just add all the remaining reserve ammo to current ammo. Current ammo plus equals reserve ammo. And then reserve ammo just gets set to zero. And that looks something like this. So we have five in the reserves, and let's shoot until we have two bullets left. So when I reload, I should have seven bullets in the clip and zero in the reserves. Just like that. We've successfully set the numbers. Now we um, just need to handle like the, the display, the visual. Um, first, we hide the progress bar in the bottom. Then we get rid of all the remaining child bullets in, in that ammo display uh, grid container. And then we fill it back up with as many bullets as there is current ammo. And that's it for the refill ammo function. Uh, this helper function, the set reserve ammo, all, literally all it does is set the variable as well as update that um that text this number right here so that's ammo and reloading it can be pretty tricky so I, I hope it made sense i hope this helped you could take this even farther by having multiple different weapons with uh each with their own ammo reserves and their own clips uh let me know if you want a tutorial on that Make sure to download this demo if you want to see all of the code and, and mess around with it on your own. To actually run the demo, um, it's, it's a little bit different than normal because this project has multiple demos inside of it. Uh, so you, you're going to want to find the ammo and reloading folder and then right click the ammo and reloading scene. Um, and then up here, it's going to say set as main scene. I've already done that. This will allow you to just press play and then have the scene run. But yeah, um, so the player code, which is what this video was on, is right here in the player folder and then player.gd. This video is sponsored by Godot Node Essentials. It's the largest knowledge base for Godot nodes with over 100 demos and dozens of guides. There's 2D, UI, 3D. It'll teach you time-saving tricks that'll help you in every project.